your emergency stop doing what it's supposed to do, you hit this button, shutting your program down, shutting your machine, removing off, and shutting that spindle off, you may not be doing what you think it is. If it's something you're interested in, let me show you what I did. It's coming right up. When I first built this controller, I knew that I needed a way to shut down the spindle when I hit the emergency stop and Mach 3 seemed to be the answer for that without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. But there's an issue with that and that is if your computer crashes you need a physical way of shutting that spindle off or at least I do. I run that that spindle is 240 volt and this box is 110 or 120 so in essence this VFD is connected to the uh, breaker and is plugged into my 220 outlet. So the only way that I can communicate with that spindle is via an RS-485. So if the computer crashes or there's a power out on 120, then the spindle is going to continue to run regardless of whether I push this emergency or not because it's software dependent. So let me show you what I did. I'm going to pull the top off here. It's a simple solution. It works for me. Let's take a look at it. So the first thing I did was to add a spindle enable switch or basically what this does is it turns the power on to the spindle so I no longer have to come down here and turn the breaker on to turn the VFD on I just hit this switch it has a pilot light so that the enable switch when it's turned on will illuminate this once you power up the spindle. You cannot power the spindle up under any circumstances if the emergency stop is in, your enable is off, your master power is off, or your spindle switch is in the off position. You have to have all three of these things on this side enabled in order to power the VFD. How did I accomplish that? Is through the solid state relay. This is a relay that operates from I believe 3 to maybe 32 volts. So this switch here powers on that relay. This relay is a DC power on and it switches up to 380 volts. So I'm switching the 220 voltage via this connector. So basically what happens is you have to have this switch turned on. That turns your power on to your um, stepper, your stepper drivers. That's your main power. So that, you see these here, they're switched and they go back around to here. So that's why if this is off, you cannot run the spindle. 
And I did that for a reason because I want the machine to be movable and I want it enabled to turn the spindle on. I don't want the spindle to run unless the whole machine can run. I had to change my e-stop and I have to use the active high or the normally closed. And this is the power that is bridged through this switch right here. So if I hit this e-stop, it will turn the spindle enable off. It depowers it on the 5 volt side and shuts off the 120, which shuts off the contactor. We'll go over there and look at that a little bit more in depth in a second. The enable, if this is off, this 5 volt power supply powers this. So if I turn the enable off, it will shut the power off to this and de-energize again the spindle. If all three of these were on and I got in an emergency and all I could think about was to hit the power, it will de-energize the stepper motors. They can't move. And it will shut the 120 side off again to the contactor. So I think all the bases are covered here. If I get a computer crash, it will not shut the spindle off. It will continue to run because or it would because it was on its own plugged into its own outlet but if I push this now it will de-energize the 5 volts shut that off and shut this off if 110 is totally lost to this obviously it's gonna shut this off let me spin this around in the back and show you what I did there On the back side, I added a two pin aviation connector. This is the 120 out, which this just plugs into. And this is the 120 coil to the contactor. So this has to be plugged in or you cannot power the VFD up. So it's a few simple things you need is a switch. You don't need the pilot light. That's something that's a visual thing I want to see. An aviation two pin connector. The solid state relay. And we'll go down and take a look at the contactor. So here's the shot of the contactor. Luckily when I built this uh, little enclosure here, this holder, uh, there's enough room to mount that um, right in between the breaker and the VFD. So what basically happens is the one or the 240 comes out of here. Up to the switch side on the top here when it makes contact L1 and L2 or T1 and T2 now come into the VFD and power the VFD on so why did I choose 120 or an AC because I want 
this VFD to be reset. If I hit an e-stop, I want the power to be totally cut off from this so when it comes back on, it's reset to a no start uh, position. I don't want for something to all of a sudden come back on and then now the spindle just comes on out of the blue. So it's on a reset just in case I forgot to switch something off. So that that uh, contactor like 15 bucks, 10, 15 bucks eBay. I'll post links to where I picked this stuff up. That solid state relay, it's a 40 amp. I don't need that, but it's like seven, eight bucks. So um, I went ahead and bought that. But this thing is not going to pull more than probably 10, 11 amps max. So let's go back up top and uh, take a look. I got the um, controller reinstalled, but there's something that I think I should go over here real quick. If you have a breakout board such as this, this is a Long's Motor um, DB25-1205. They all look the same, um, whether it's longs or whatever. Um, when you put a parallel connector on here and connect it to your computer, or you use a USB, like UC100 uh, motion controller, you have back voltage coming back through this board. And that's what these two um, jumpers so you can only use, or you'll only have to use one power supply, um, um, VDD, and your ground here. But the problem is, is when you connect uh, your cable here, there's a residual voltage that comes back to this side on your uh, input pins. And what it does is since these two are bridged together, it bleeds power back through your VDD and ground to your power supply. So if you have anything connected, um, such as pilot lights, or even it's enough residual voltage to power um, the solid state relay, believe it or not, that thing only operates at a measly, I believe, 15 to 20 milliamps. And it wasn't shutting off when I turned the computer on. Um, so do yourself a favor. You should probably do it anyway. Is grab yourself a diode. And install it on your positive going into this board. If you don't know how these are installed. The... ring with a gray ring on the back side that is your direction of flow flows to that ring and it can't come back through that ring so you would install the bigger black section this way with the ring up towards this so that residual voltage can't come back if you don't do that you're going to have some undesired results and you should probably do it anyway, whether you do what I did with this or not, or you may get some undesired results because of it. So we'll move on and we'll look at the contactor. Okay, so we're down on the controller. And here is how this works. In order to power the spindle on, the spindle has to be on, the master power, and enable, and your e-stop out. If any three of these are out of sync with each other, it powers the spindle off. If you get in an emergency and you hit your e-stop, it depowers 
the contactor and shuts the spindle off. I chose to use um, only two lines, which is the 240. You can you can actually connect this to the spindle itself. Um, because this is a three-phase contactor. Uh, I chose not to do that because I want the spindle with VFD to shut off and reset itself. I don't want to power back on or, you know, have, you know, a breaker or something. I go out and forget to turn the switches off. I come in, um, go out and reset breakers and the spindle's back on. So the only way to restart that now, again, is through... Mach 3 after the computer is rebooted. So that's that's more of a safety thing. So again, you can you can use three phase uh, motor and stop it on that side. But I wanted to shut the power off totally um, to the VFD. So here's how this operates. If I turn the spindle on, there's nothing. No power. You have to turn the enable to power this on and this actually uh, when you turn enable on it turns a 5 volt power supply on and that is the 5 volts is actually switched through here and bridged over to here and then back to the relay so when you turn this on you'll the, the, the relay is energized but the contactor will not contact because you need a 120 volt coil and this is the master power that provides 120 volts to this box so when i turn this on the contactor turns on and you'll see this it takes a second for that to power up if i hit the e-stop it's gonna shut off the five volts to the solid state relay and de-energize 120 volts to the contactor. So that shuts off. And you, you'll see the VFD, it'll shut down. If I turn the enable off, it will shut off the 5 volts to the um, relay and shut the spindle down. Again, it shuts it off. <clears throat> so that's the 5 volt side. I'm just walking through the scenarios here. If I lose power to the box, obviously it's going to shut everything off. But this switch will shut off the stepper motor power and the, the 120 to the contactor and shut this box off. But these will remain lit. And I have this 5 volt on a separate switch for a reason. So that shuts off the contactor again. So you're asking yourself why is the 5 volts not wired into uh, my master power and the reason is is when I start Mach 3 up uh, normally uh, that's going to be off or all these switches are going to be in off position and obviously that's going to be reset but I want Mach 3 and to make sure it's communicating with this machine um, and this this enable powers on the this the the breakout board before I turn anything else on. So that's the reason for that. I don't want to, have to turn the master power on, and then uh, this is powered up. Um, I want to, I want to do it in stages. So uh, that's why I have that like that. We'll go over here and look at the contactor real quick. Okay, so. The contactor here, these things are very inexpensive. I'll post links to the contactor, the Fotec, um, solid state relay, um, 
I believe both of them together probably cost you 25 bucks. Uh, you'll need a switch. You don't need the pilot light. I'll post a link to the pilot lights uh, if you'd like. Um, a pilot light generally is line voltage. So it'll come in 120 or 240. So you'll have to take the... Um, probably change it out to an LED and go ahead and uh, throw a resistor in there and if you're looking at uh, a 12 volt such as the green one uh, you're gonna look at a 390 ohm resistor and it's 150 for 5 volts and that'll if you're coming down from those voltages that'll bring you uh, to where you need to be uh, so this is a pretty simple setup here. Uh, the plug, plug in to the uh, <clears throat> panel here with the breaker. That comes, loops back around and to the top. 240 and one to one coming out. So you're going to have L1, L2, L3. You're not going to use L3 or A2 and you can have T1 T2 so those just come directly back out of here and into your box and then you're gonna take your your ground wires you're gonna have to there's no place to ground these together don't put those on A2 you're gonna see some contacts for A2 which are normally open I believe those bridge T3 so you'll short T3 to ground and you're gonna have some big issues so don't use A2 for anything unless you know what you're doing so you, if you were gonna use this for the spindle side then you're gonna use your three phase T1 2 3 or L or L uh, 1 2 3 and then T1 2 3 coming back out but again I wanted to shut this off not just the spindle so it's a pretty simple thing to to wire this in. This is DIN mountable. I ordered a 12 inch piece of DIN rail. This does have mount holes, but I don't see a, a way to ever get a screwdriver in there to use them. So uh, DIN rail, and then you see the little white plastic tab in the back there you just pull that down and if you don't know what a DIN is this whole thing just comes out other than that you just put it in and it clips in it's the easiest way to go you're not fighting screw holes and, and trying to figure, trying to get to those because they're back behind that behind that one screw there all the way over to the right there's, there's no way to get in there so that is how I wired my ESOP. I think I have all the bases covered on that. Um, I do as far as I know. If I shut the master power off, everything shuts off. Um, if you have a freak out moment, if you hit any one of those switches, it'll shut that spindle off. And the ESOP will shut the spindle off. So, we're going to close this one. Once again, if you like this video, hit that button. Subscribe, comment. If you have any questions on how I wired this, it's, pretty, it's very, very easy and simple um, to do it. We got the fourth axis sitting up here. I finally finished that up. That'll be coming up next. I'm going to get that running. I actually have it running, but I'll show you how I mounted it. And we'll call it done. Once again, and as always, thanks for watching.